Good morning, everyone. Please rise. Please turn your hymn book to page 82. Today we will sing hymn number 43, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Let's praise our Lord by saying the hymn once. Today's scripture is taken from Psalms chapter 34, verse 3, which is printed on the hymn book, page 5, item number 2. Please listen to God's words. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Psalms chapter 34, verse 3. Let's read it together. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Psalms chapter 34, First three. Let's bow and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the light of the world, always, always shining upon us, and set us free by the truth. Lord, please protect Hong Kong with your mercy and fill this land with your love. May your love be with us always. Bless the whole assembly and lessons today. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, principal, vice and assistant principals, teachers, and fellow students. In the last academic, I'm a Christian from Form 5B. In the last academic year, our school organized several study tours to let students to have a chance to explore the outside world, letting students to have a more diversified and specialized experience. We are glad to have invited students that joined the history tour to Japan and the visual arts tour to Korea to share their experience. Before we start the program today, may we now invite principal, vice and assistant principals to proceed to the auditorium to enjoy the sharing. <coughs> Good morning, principal, vice and assistant principal, teachers and fellow schoolmates. I am Yuan Lokhe from Form 2B. I am Lam Lok Sum from Form 2B. I am Hong Yu Zhou from Form 2A. I am Yue Jing Kuan from Form 2A. This summer, we went to Japan for a study tour. We learned about the culture of Japan. First, we talk about the food culture. The typical Japanese meal consists of rice, vegetables, and soup. Usually, the Japanese likes eating pork, chicken, and beef, which is quite similar to us. Moreover, soy products can be easily found, such as tofu and miso. Overall, the meals are well balanced. Now, let's talk about the religious culture of Japan. Every worshippers have to purify themselves before approaching Suwa Shrine, 
by using a thermistor to wash their left hands, right hands, mouth, and the handle of the water. These were the photos we took when we are at Shua Shrine. Omiju are Japanese fortune telling paper stripes. The fortune that one is granted can range from having a great blessing to a great curse at 100 yen. And luckily, if you end up with a curse, you are able to tie the piece of paper to a tree or a fence at the temple or shrine, and this will make your bad luck go away. If you get a good fortune, you should keep it for good luck. Catholicism only had about 400 years to take root in Japan before military rule banned Christianity and kicked out the missionaries. Anyone who hesitated or wouldn't do it uh, was arrested and forced to recant his or her faith. If they didn't, they would be tortured and killed. The remaining Catholics went underground. They disguised the images of Jesus and Mary to look like Buddha. They disguised their prayers to sound like Buddha's chants. Now, let's talk about the warrior of Japan. The Samurai residence was built in 1624. This is the layout of the house in the past. Samurai were warriors in Japan. They were hired by Japanese feudal lords. They should be loyal to their lords. This is the outlook of the house and this is the kitchen. This is the interior of the samurai, samurai house and this is the living room. May I now pass the mic to the next group? Good morning, my name is Adam Lokan from Form 6C. I'm Chen Zihei from Form 2A. We are Group 2 and our presentation is about important scenic spots in our journey. Hashima Island was established in 1887. With the appearance of a battleship, the island is also called the Battleship Island. In the 19th century, a great number of laborers and workers migrated to the Hashima Island for mining its undersea coal mines. So a lot of infrastructures and buildings are built on the island. The buildings are made of poor concrete and we retain heat that cannot lose heat effectively, causing a frequent fire accident in the buildings. Hashima Island is a significant historical site, a symbol of Japanese mining development. The next site is about the Daijafu Temango. It is a Shinito shrine in Daijafu, Fukuoka in Japan. It is built over the grave for Sugawara no Michijane, Gunyun Douzan, and is one of the main shrines dedicated to Tenjin. That the five form of the Michijane, Tinsan Zunyang. Sukowara no Michijane originally was a scholar, poet, and politician of the Heian period of Japan. He was praised as a god after his death. It was because people believed that Kyoto was, Kyoto was cursed by him as he was framed to die. It was believed that many politicians and even the emperor were cursed to die by him. Now he is a god of wise and knowledgeable. Every year, a lot of students will go to the shrine to pray for the good grade of the examinations. The next slide is about Nagasaki Peace Park. It is to commemorate the atomic bombing in Nagasaki on August 9, 1945, during World War II. This peace statue symbolizes Nagasaki citizens' wish for peace. The form of the statue means both God's love and Buddha's mercy. The right hand pointing upwards means the threat of an atomic bomb. The extended left hand means peace, and the gently closed eyes pray for the response of the bomb's victim souls. The fountain of peace is to mourn for those who died in the atomic bombing because of water shortage, as the water was polluted by radioactive dust and was unable to drink. Further details will be explained by Group 4. The next slide is about Nagasaki Museum of History and Culture. It holds 48,000 items in its collection, including historical documents, arts, and crafts that tell the story of Nagasaki as the sole window opened to foreign countries during the period of national isolation. It is one of the few museums in Japan devoted to the theme of overseas exchange. The last slide is about Nagasaki Bao Park. It is a breathtaking and outstanding zoo. It lets you have close interaction with different kinds of animals and insects. The mascot of the Bao Park is a capybara. It's appealing, fast choppy, and its fur is rough. We fed different kinds of animals such as kangaroos, monkeys, and even sheep. We had a time of our lives there. Now let us pass the mic to group three.
Good morning, everyone. I am Rachel from Form 2C. I'm Carrie from 2C. I'm Yannis from 2A. I'm Renee from 2C. Carrie, remember the trip we went for last summer? Yes, it was an unforgettable trip to Japan. Sure, we had great fun on DIY activities. We have soap making, ramen making, and gyro making. These are all interesting experiences. Let's introduce them one by one. We went to a soap making factory. This is how we make the DIY soap in the factory. A lady in the factory gave us some powder, then we mixed 10 ml of water with the powder. Then we squeezed the mixture for a few minutes till it became hard. Then we put the mixture into the mold, press it until it became flat. Then we wrapped the whole thing with wrapping paper. Wait for about 10 minutes till the mixture became dry. Then we took the mixture out and the soap is finished. This is another DIY activity, ramen making. Making ramen is not difficult. First of all, wrap the dough. Then wrap the dough with wrapping paper and put it on the floor. Then we use our bare feet to step on the dough until it becomes flat. We cut the dough into four equal parts. We then put the pieces of dough into the machine to make it even thinner. We put the very flat dough into the noodle cutter. Look, is it wonderful? Then we need to make dumplings now. We were making the dumpling skin. We wrap the meat with the dumpling skins. We boil the noodles. It took just a few minutes. The soup was provided for us. Look, a bowl of ramen was done. It's yummy. During our visits, we also make the Japanese traditional gyro. We make gyro in an art center. The art center had prepared the colors and gyros for us. We painted the gyros with different colors. We put a string onto the gyro and heat it. Is. May we now pass the mic to the next group? I'm Serena from Form 5B. I'm Faith from Form 5B. We are here to introduce the second use of atomic bomb by the U.S., which put an end to the Second World War. We visited the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum and gained a deeper understanding of that particular part of history. The museum shows the model of the atomic bomb, Fat Man. The length of it is 3.25 meters, and it weighs 4.5 tons. It was dropped over Nagasaki on the 9th of August in 1945. In 1944, U.S. President Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill agreed at a meeting in Hyde Park that the atomic bomb should be used against Japan. In the next year, some Japanese cities were selected as the candidates for the atomic bombings in a meeting of the target committee. For example, Tokyo Bay, Kawasaki, Yokohama, Nagoya, Osaka, and Hiroshima, etc. So, can you guess where Nagasaki is? Yes, I know. It's located in the southwest part of Japan. On the 7th of August, in a report on the post stamp conference, the U.S. President Truman said, we have used it in order to shorten the agony of war, in order to save the lives of thousands and thousands of young Americans. On the 8th of August, the second atomic bomb was loaded on a B-29 bomber. The primary target was Kokura, Arsino, and City, and the secondary target was Nagasaki urban area. On the morning of 9th of August, the boxcar left Tinian Island carrying the atomic bomb. The bomber circled over Kokura three times, yet he changed the course for Nagasaki because of the smoke cover. As 10.55, AM, the visibility was also poor over Nagasaki. Yeah. At this point, the crew considered returning back because of the drilling fuel. Finally, at 11.02 AM, the clouds broke briefly and the atomic bomb was released over the city. Now, we're going to talk about how destructive the bomb was. You can see that clothes were all burned by the bomb. You can imagine that the temperature at that time was extremely high, that people were burned to death in just a few seconds. 
Due to the high temperature, as you can see from the photo, victims may suffer from keloid scar. It occurred when the skin is severely injured and the scar tissues are trying to cover the wound. This photo shows that the man was suffering from flash burn. His skin was burned and damaged by a flash. He had to undergo surgeries after the bombing. Apart from burning the skin, people have suffered from eye disease or even cancer such as cataracts. And this photo shows the glass bottle was melted due to strong radiation and high temperature. The next photo shows a lunchbox of a student. The lunchbox and the food inside were carbonized. We visited the Nagasaki Peace Park that commemorates the atomic bombing on 9th of August in 1945. There's a fountain of peace in the Peace Park. It represents a prayer for the repose of the souls of the many atomic bomb victims who died searching for water. This is the renowned peace statue placed in the Nagasaki Peace Park. The statue represents a mixture of Western and Eastern arts, religion, and ideology. Installed in front of the statue is black marble forts containing the names of the atomic bomb victims and survivors who died in subsequent years. After this trip, we have realized the importance of peace, and as you have seen just now, wars and destructive weapons brought, uh, destroyed properties and lives and brought fear to the world. The damages brought by the wars were irreversible. And most importantly, we have learned that we should cherish peace and freedoms that we are enjoying right at this moment. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anna from Form 5B. I'm Kristen from Form 5B. I'm Candy from Form 5D. And I'm Aurora from Form 5E. Last summer, we are lucky to have the opportunity to go on a five days tour to Korea and learn more about the arts, history, and culture there. In the following sharing, we are going to talk about our experiences of different Korean cultures and exchanging with local Korean students. After five hours of flight and a bad night's sleep, we finally arrived in Gwangju. First, let us introduce the cities that we went to and stay in these few days. We went to these three cities, which are the circled part of the map on the screen. This is Gwangju. We went to the Mudan San National Park, the National Arts Museum here, and also visited a local artist in this city. We learned a lot more about Korea's traditional arts and history there. This is Mount Po. We visited the Mount Po Marine Time Museum and sketched the field of Mount Po ports. We know more about the local natural ecology and southern customs. And this is Jan Ju. We learned to make traditional Korean paper with the instruction by a tradesman that have made Hanji for over 10 years. In the first day of the tour, we tried on handbook and took lots of photos in a traditional Korean building. A handbook is a traditional Korean dress for semi-formal or formal attire during traditional occasions, such as festivals, celebrations, or ceremonies. It is categorized by fabric colors and simple lines without pockets. Although it was hot and a little bit uncomfortable to wear the dress, it's, we still find it a fun experience wearing such a special piece of cloth and hang out on the street. We then went to the Henji Museum and visited different artworks made by Henji and even participated in Henji making. Korean paper or Henji is the name of a traditional handmade paper from Korea. The process of making Henji is very complicated and skillful. Um, from gathering the prime materials of Henji to finishing off the paper, every step has to be done delicately and uh, carefully in order to make a piece of Henji. Fortunately, we are only asked to do the final step. We need to stir up the sheets of mixture and with a long and wooden stick and place them in a warm room. This process was very interesting and we even got to own the sheets of paper we made by ourselves. 
We also went to the Guangzhou National Museum and has asked history lesson about the influence of Chinese painting on Korean painting and a brief history of ceramic arts. We are surprised how Chinese culture influenced Korean culture arts so much and learn to appreciate Chinese arts with more. Now, I would like to talk about our experience hanging with the local Korean student. We met a group of local Korean students who are also studying visual art on day three. We are asked to draw together on a wooden board that are assigned a number on with common theme, peace. We then need to join our art piece together to form a huge artwork, which represents peace, peace has the power to connect everyone. Through talking with the Korean student and watching each other's processing of making the work, we understood a lot more about the strengths and weaknesses of our own and learned to improve. After that, we are formed into different groups and made another art piece by playing a game. We have to use tape to draw out the person laying on the wall and repeat the process several times. Although the Korean students were a little shy in the beginning and we can only use our limited Korean language to communicate with them, but we turned out to be friends throughout the game and it was such a memorable day. We longed for the day when we meet them again. This is the end of our sharing. May we now pass the mic to the next group. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eunice from 6B. I'm Cherry from 6C. I'm Safina from 6C. On the first day, we went to the John Nambu traditional market, which already have over 200 years old. The market was revitalized with the creation of the youth market, located on the previously empty shops on the second floor of the traditional market. Because there were so many youngsters moved away from the rural area to the city for career development, the market has gradually become empty. Then, the Jeonju government would like to provide subsidies to attract youngsters to come back in order to revitalize the traditional market by, pro by, by developing the artistic div atmosphere. And we also went to the Yang Nim Dong Penguin Village. It was a village from the 1970s and 80s, and it was transformed into an outdoor exhibition space. And the elderly living there with new paint walk like penguins, so the neighbors living nearby named the village Penguin Village. And the villagers uh, cleaned up the burned down houses and also some abandoned houses and filled the village with artworks. And some of the artworks were made of rubbish, like plastic bottles, tin cans, or even some old CDs. And and some of them were made of unwanted furniture, like old shoes, clocks, or some antique toys. And it shows how creative the villagers are and also how artsy the community is. Afterwards, we went to Art Polygon. It is an art space on the mountain with green and comfortable environments, which it is very different to Hong Kong art studios. Inside the polygon, there are artworks by the artist Choi Sun In, and the film was Bon Voyage, which means yellow paint on. She suffered in cancer for several years. She created these artworks during the days in hospital and after she recovered. She wanted to tell and record down her own experiences and her own feelings. Besides painting, she also makes some sculptures. For example, she made a big music box with a sculpture of herself and a cat. And we also visited an artist studio called Kim Sang Yong, and he studied in China National Academy of Fine Arts, and he is fluent in Chinese too. So he has held several solo exhibitions and also group exhibitions. And during the visit, we asked questions about uh, his artworks and also different kinds of paintings and it was almost like an interview and we also got uh, many souvenirs from him which is a sketchbook designed by him and it was fascinating to see all of his artworks and here are also some artworks we've seen at the Heaven Culture and Art Village in Damyang. Since the opening in 1992, the Gwangju Museum of Art has been a part of modern art history in Korea and gained ground as a cultural zone. Through expansion since 20, 2007 to 2016, the museum hopes to contribute to the cultural development of fine art and provide a lifestyle of cultural and bliss for the general public by becoming more accessible. 
The Guangzhou Museum of Art would like visitors to have a richly moving experience, and it is striving to contribute for a richer world as an art museum that draws closer to citizens, an art museum that works together with artists, and an art museum offering classes to the culturally disadvantaged. Lastly, we went to Asia Culture Center. It is a foundation where cultural exchange and collaboration take place. It hosts a variety of programs which include exhibitions, performances, and as well as many educational initiatives and festivals. It also provides venues for exchange among international artists. Besides, inside the ACC, there is a children's museum, and it provides exhibition and libraries for children. The library is so large and professional. It consists of many different kinds of books, which are so suitable for children to read, so that both adults and children can enjoy their day in ACC. This is the end of our presentation. May we pass the mic to the next group? Hello, I'm Selena from 4A. I'm Crystal from 4C. I'm Sarah from 2D. And I'm Hazel from 2E. Hey, Crystal, what is the first thing you can think about Korea? Of course, it's their food culture. Then you must pay attention to our following sharing about the Korean food culture. Do you guys like to drink coffee? Recently, Koreans are obsessed with the dr coffee drinking culture. We are so lucky to have a chance to visit a local coffee shop, having a taste of Korean coffee. We've known that Koreans love to drink coffee so much. Most of them will have a cup of coffee after dinner, so we can find coffee shops everywhere. Despite their coffee culture, their local food are also very attracting. Let me show you some foods that we've tasted in Korea. This is the jajangmyeon. This is the cheese grilled chicken. And this is the Jeonju bibimbap. Here are some Korean barbecue. And this is the Korean fried chicken. And some other Korean side dishes. We've made a table to compare the differences of food culture between Korea and Hong Kong. For Korean, they always love to drink coffee. And here, we usually drink milk tea. Koreans also love to eat spicy food. And here we usually eat bland food. The Korean chopsticks are flat and are made of iron. And the chopsticks here are round and are made of wood. Koreans use hot sauce to preserve food. And we use vinegar for preserving food. They usually love to drink ice water in meals. And here we like to drink hot water. Hey, so did you plan about your dream retire life? During the trip, I found my dream place, Mokpo. Due to the historical events, the buildings of Mokpo is very short and flat, which is very different from Hong Kong. After having our lunch, we went to Mokpo Harbor to take a walk and spend some time scratching. Sarah, oh my god, did you watch the newest K-drama Hotel de Luna? Ayu is so pretty! Absolutely. Do you remember the hotel entrance appeared in drama? Actually, we have already visited there during our trip. Have you guys ever tried to talk with Koreans? During our trip, we've grabbed a chance to communicate with the locals. We were asked to draw a poster about Hong Kong and introduce it to the Koreans. The poster included some traditional food of Hong Kong and some significant buildings and food of Hong Kong. It also included a map of Hong Kong as the background. And we were also asked it to come to complete a mission, introducing uh, Hong Kong's locals with the poster we've designed it, and request them to take a photo with us. Although we lost in the competition, we have learned some Korean during the mission. And so now, try to speak to us. The first one is, 안녕하세요, 우리 Hong Kong 사랑이에요. And the second one is, 예뻐요. Do you guys know what do they mean? The meaning is, the first one is, hello, we are Hong Kong citizen, and the second one means, is it pretty? So, let's speak them together again. 안녕하세요, Hong Kong 사랑이에요. One, two, three. 
안녕하세요. 헌헌삼이에요. 예뻐요? 1, 2, 3. 예뻐요? And now, we would like to invite some students to repeat our words. So, um, maybe 2E number 8. Thank you. And how about one E twenty four? Yamboyo. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me pick two more. Ana haseyo. We are Hong Kong. Sarapieo. Sarapieo. Ieo. Okay. Um, now, maybe we pick two more numbers. Maybe three A number four. 안녕하세요, 홍 Hong Kong 사랑이에요. And the last one, maybe three uh, E uh, number eleven. Please stand up where it's uh, free E number 11. Free E number 11. Thank you. And so now, let us go to the last section of the sharing, which is our reflection. We have learned how to communicate with the locals there. When we were searching for reference, we found that Hong Kong and Korean culture are completely different. We are happy that we can share our culture to the Koreans. And also, they are very nice and friendly to us. Also, we have gained a lot of self-confidence during this event. And now, this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. This is the end of all the sharing today. We hope that all of you enjoy it and join the study tour in this academic year. May we now pass the mic to Mr. Mo for dismissal.